Welcome to a new vlog and the title probably gave it away already but this video is about a PCB solder trainer that I designed to measure one's soldering skills. The idea is not new, it has been around for several years and there have been several designs uh, that I've seen online but if you're curious you can join me in this video to see how I designed mine. I remember how soldering felt back when I was just starting tinkering with electronics. I think I was about 7 or 8 years old and I had this big communist soldering iron that I got from my father. I'll put a picture of this on screen because I can't find it right now. But this was about 100 watts rated and it had this small flashlight incandescent bulb and it used a, a thick copper wire as the soldering tip. And it was great for soldering big stuff due to the power rating and the ability to transfer that heat efficiently. I remember I was using too much solder, I was making these huge solder blobs on each solder point I was doing. But imagine uh, using something like that for uh, the soldering we're doing today, it would be impossible. And this brings me to this box. I designed a PCB solder trainer and I ordered these uh, boards from PCB Way and I have already taken a look inside this box. PCB Way kindly offered to sponsor this video and I opted for this uh, matte green solder mask and Enig gold plating finish and I just must stop for a few seconds to show you how nice this uh, combination uh, looks like. It's not the cheapest options you can get but it looks and feels like a very high quality PCB and although it's not entirely necessary for uh, this type of application the uh, gold plating does provide a very flat surface to solder to and for the smallest pads uh, that I have in here uh, it's sure going to make a difference. Always, if you can afford it, get the uh, Enig finish. It's nicer in every way. I'll put some links in the description below so you can download the Gerber files for this board and order your own if you like it. I will also probably have a couple of these left which I will be sending to my uh, Patreons but I will announce that over on my Patreon and if you'd like to support the channel you can do so with as little as $1 per month and you get early access to videos or benefits like these uh, giveaways. So getting back to the board design, let's take a closer look at uh, what I have in here. So on the left we start with 01005 passives. Uh, these are five resistors which are uh, connected in series and at the end of the string there is uh, an LED D1 and the LED has to be um, bigger uh, as you notice it's uh, 0402 and this is because you can't get LEDs so small as 01005 and that is imperial size. If you get all five resistors and the LED solder right and you apply 5 volts at this uh, header the LED should light up and that's your indication that you've at least electrically got everything connected right. And then the size of the uh, component goes up we have 0204, 0402, 0603, 0805 uh, 1206 then we have some resistor networks I believe these are 4 times 0603 that's the name of the package then we have SOT23 devices these uh, are dual diodes uh, which are uh, connected in series and they will drop some voltage and then finally light up the LED at the end of the string. Depending on the type of LED you choose and its forward voltage you can calculate the uh, resistor values uh, needed in this uh, circuit. In general a green LED uh, will work well with 40 ohm resistors and uh, the pads for uh, uh, the uh, passive components are the hand solder type which uh, means they're a bit longer so you can touch them from the side with the uh, soldering iron tip. So that's something to help you out. On the other hand I also have something that will make things a bit harder and that is a copper fill on the back side of the board. Having a copper fill makes soldering just a bit more difficult because it's going to sink some of the heat away but it shouldn't matter much for the uh, uh, small pads used on the board. Uh, it should matter for the bigger pads but I believe that's something we should have on a solder trainer because it mimics a, uh, a real PCB which would have 
ground planes either on the bottom side or on the internal layers uh, which will sink the heat away so this kind of simulates a real board on the right side of the board i have some practice areas for chip packages and these will uh, not light up anything these are just for you to practice soldering these packages and you can inspect them visually when you're done to see uh, the results now you can set the challenge yourself and depending if you wear any vision glasses or not uh, you can decide to test your skills with or vi without visual aid i think it's interesting to see how small you can get without any magnification because obviously under a microscope it should be perfectly possible to do even even the uh, smallest uh, 01005 series uh, but without any magnification uh, i want to test how small i can get so that's what i'll do next i'll test myself to see if i can do the uh, uh smallest ones with no magnification i'll be using my uh, t12 soldering station for this uh, some very thin solder wire and lots of flux So I went for the 0204 test wearing just my vision glasses, no magnification. The most difficult part was to uh, align the resistors with their pads. The actual soldering is not as difficult because you get some feedback when you hit the side of the resistor with the soldering iron tip so you know you are in the right spot. Good flux and a nice thin soldering iron tip is a must here but I managed to do it. I clean the board using some flux cleaner and now it's time to uh, test it to see how I did. So I have 5 volts on these uh, wires from my bench power supply. Let's apply 5 volts to the pin header and the LED lights up. So I can do 0201 with no magnification but that doesn't mean you should do it with no magnification. I'm pretty sure the, the results are not consistent and why struggle when there are cheap microscopes available nowadays. In any case, let's put this under a microscope and see how I did. And here are the images from the microscope. We can see that R9 and the LED look fine, well aligned with the pad. The others are not properly aligned with the pad. Uh, they are just barely making a connection like R7 and this is the stuff that you won't see with the naked eye. That's why if you do micro soldering I recommend you get yourself one of these uh, microscopes. Uh, the one I have I did a video review on this and I will link it on screen right now. So that's pretty much uh, my level of uh, soldering with no magnification. Doing 01005 is probably possible as well but it would be like soldering in the dark uh, now i would be curious to hear what is your level of micro soldering how small can you get with no magnification let me know in the comments below and if you'd like to support the channel on patreon you can do so with as little as one dollar per month and you get early access to these videos as well as access to giveaways uh, like these pcbs thank you for watching and i will see you next time